Welcome to another edition of In the Community. I'm Jennifer Beck. When you think of mission work, what comes to mind? Spending years in Africa? Perhaps a few weeks on a work and witness trip in a poverty-stricken region? While both of those options have benefit, how about being a missionary in your own region by blessing others through acts of service? That's just one of the definitions of Ignite Community Relief. I recently sat down with Ignite founder, Matt Naylor. All right, we've been talking about you a lot on television in the last few weeks. Not just you, of course, we've been talking about Ignite Community Relief sure. and the projects that have been happening. This is the second year for this mission-based, I want to say, I almost was going to call it a construction project, but that's kind of correct, kind of not. It's really a service opportunity to show the hands and feet of Jesus other people. Yeah, what we're really about is empowering the church or individuals to become missionaries to their local community through service projects, primarily home repair and things like that. We've done anything from hang a shelf for a lady who just didn't know where to turn to rebuild a basement wall. And it's really dependent on the volunteers and their knowledge and skills. So we're going to talk about volunteers in a moment because you can't do what you're doing nope. without them. <laughs> but I love what you said is to be missionaries in your community through service because we think about mission work which is important in all aspects but the what you can offer to individuals by fixing things on their houses i think is just it's just huge i mean this lady yeah. who has a basement wall that needed fixed every day she could look at that and then it was fixed yeah. and she could feel the presence of jesus i would hope through all of that yeah we actually have one volunteer who shared a story with me about replacing a light for a volunteer for a homeowner and he said every time you look at that light i want you to think my creator loves me mm -hmm. and what a great thing to to invest into that homeowner so that every time she flips the switch and the light comes on my creator loves me mm -hmm. loves me enough to send this person who doesn't know me to just share a little bit of my need Absolutely. All right, as I mentioned, we've been talking about Ignite for, for, uh, for months here on the TV station. You've been hearing about it a lot, but we finally have Matthew Naylor here to explain exactly, tell me the heart, what is the Community Relief, Relief Project? Well, our Ignite things are to ignite a passion inside of people to go out and become missionaries and to love and serve people, because the primary goal through these Ignite events is to love and serve the homeowner. The byproduct, the oh, by the way, is we're going to fix your house. That's not necessarily a primary goal. The primary goal is to build relationships with those homeowners, to show them somebody cares. And that's why we say anybody can become involved. You don't have to know how to fix anything. You don't even have to know what a hammer looks like. You can become involved by just sitting with the homeowner and sharing life. Some people like me, we're kind of tunnel vision. You give me a project, I'm on that project, and I forget the homeowner. So I need that other person there beside me to really invest in the homeowner while I'm focused over here. So it takes all, all the body to come and serve the body like that. So you, you do things a little bit interestingly in the sense that you have a three-day project yes. that's going on. You did a three-day intensive, intensive basically, it was right. an intensive back in June yes. for projects in Lima that need to take place. What kind of things happened during that time? We replaced an entire roof. We did a big whole house siding project. Uh, they tore down and rebuilt a garage for somebody. Flooring was installed, electrical, uh, plumbing was done, HVAC, a really landscape, house cleaning. It was pretty much anything and everything was done. So you had a whole bunch of volunteers. I think you told yeah. me 70, 80, 90? I think 90, 90 total different volunteers. volunteers signed about. up in advance to commit yep to either part or all of your three-day events. They didn't necessarily sign up in advance. Some just showed up during the event, and that's fine. We'll take, I mean, I'm never gonna refuse anybody. I'm gonna get you plugged in. If you wanna help out, we will get you plugged in. So I think we ended up with 90 total different volunteers, and we averaged about 55 a day during the event. So through those people, we were able to complete, I think, 22 different projects. In three, in three days, days time, yeah. 22 projects. Yep. That's incredible. Yep. And now you're getting ready to do it again in Van Wert. Van Wert. Not very long from now, August nope. 5th through the 7th. Yeah, we're gonna, I think we've got 35 people signed up right now for that. But again, I'm sure people are gonna show up during the event that haven't signed up and that's great. So I'm hoping to have another maybe 60, 80 volunteers in Van Wert because it's our first year there in Van Wert. So we're not sure what to expect, but we do have needs that have really started to pour in. So there's a lot of roofing needs that come in. Um, I think there's some flooring issues, some electrical, just again, 
I think anything and everything is going to be available. So can you paint a picture for me if a person at home is thinking, I think I want to do that, but I'm not really sure what I'm getting into. What is it going to be like for them if they say, I want to do this upcoming event in Van Wert? Really, again, we're about empowering that individual. We're about empowering the volunteers. So the volunteers in the driver's seat, if they show up and they only want to work a few hours a day, that's fine. We can get plug them in somewhere where they can be useful in those three hours a day. Some people can't really do the full day. Uh, if they want to work all three days, that's fine too. But when you show up in the morning, we're going to feed you breakfast. We're going to have a short devotional and worship time. Then we're going to allow you to kind of pick the job that you want to serve on. We will, we're trusting that God's going to send people who are capable of leading these jobs. And once a job's open, any volunteer can sign up to help with that job. Again, you get to determine how long you're working on that job for. So if you're really geared towards a specific thing like painting or flooring, I'm sure there's going to be those kind of jobs available, and you can pick that job. We're not asking you to do something you're not comfortable with. But you also get the enjoyment of the relationship building. Because Absolutely. Because every single person who volunteers for this isn't just out here to do a construction project. They're there to, because they want to spread the love of Jesus as well. Absolutely. And it's not just with the homeowners. This is with the people you're working beside. Mm -hmm. You begin to build relationships and encourage one another. And I'm sure we have people that serve that aren't really believers, but they just want to give back. Mm -hmm. So that dynamic of just really being a light all over the place is really neat. So we have Van Wert coming up in August, and then there's a three-day event in Troy in coming Troy up in September. In September. So we're going to go down there. We're actually going to stay at a church camp facility, so there'll be cabins available. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Lima and you want to come down, we will take care of you. We're going to put you up in a cabin or some sort of room. There'll be shower facilities. We're going to feed you all the meals when you're there. We take care of you. We really want to take all the obstacles that might be in your way out of your way so that we can encourage you to get involved. Matt, this is a this is a huge ministry, really. And when you think of all the facets that come together, do you remember when God birthed this in you and oh, yeah. said, this is, what, this is what I want you to start? It was actually shortly after Katrina. I served with a mission called Eight Days of Hope, who are now a national ministry. They were started thinking they were going to be a one-time event right after Katrina. And I've actually talked with the leadership there, borrowed a lot of their information. I said, hey, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. Can I just borrow some of your information? So our three-day events are kind of modeled after their eight-day events. Um, and they do these around the country after disasters and things like that. So it was birthed in 2000, whatever Katrina was, 12. I don't know, remember how. It was even before that, 2000. <laughs> I don't remember. Yes. Yeah. It was birthed early on. And I started to buy tools, I started to buy a trailer, and I knew God was planning this. I just didn't know how or when. And in 2000, late 2017, he started to tap me on the shoulder and say, it's time. Mm -hmm. So in April of 2018, we actually officially launched as Community Relief. And at first it was just me and whatever volunteers I could gather to do one project at a time. But we were quickly overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the amount of phone calls that came in. So I thought, how do we get more people involved? And that's where I went to Eight Days of Hope and said, hey, can I borrow your stuff? Can I borrow your model? And we are doing that in an effort to ignite that passion inside mm -hmm. of the volunteers so that all year long, they can still go to our website, communityrelief.net, and see there are right now 30 listed jobs that are available to be done in Lima. And if you see one you want to do or you think, hey, I can tackle that with a few of my buddies or you have a men's group, there's actually a place to fill out, hey, I want to lead this job or hey, I just want to be a general volunteer on this job and we will connect with you to provide whatever materials you need. If you need to borrow any tools, if you need any advice, we're gonna, again, empower you to be the missionary all year long to the Lima community. Now, do you need donated materials as well? I, mean, I never say no. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we operate a little bit differently. We don't ask for anything. I don't go solicit funds or anything like that. I actually kind of modeled myself after a lot of missioneries like George Mueller who said, I was really? going to mention him actually now that you say that. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's kneeling before the throne yeah. of grace and saying, God, you called mm -hmm. me, you provide. Now he moves on people's hearts to do whatever. We have been provided for for over three years now and been enabled to grow in those three years. So individuals who want to help out on a one day project should go to your website. Yep. If they want to help out in Van Wert, they should go to your website. If they're being, if their heart's being stirred right now to say, maybe I'm one of those people that you're talking about who's going to help with other avenues, should they also go to your website? Go to the website. There you can contact us. Um, everything comes directly to me at this point. So I will, 
It may take me a few days. I get overwhelmed with phone calls and stuff like that, but I will return phone calls. I will get back to everybody. And of course, you can contact us here at TV44 and we will get you connected to Matt Naylor. But there's an event coming up in Van Wert in August. There's one coming up in Troy in September, but you don't have to wait because there are things going on right now in Lima. One day, two day, three day projects that need help. Um, also, they can use help cooking food in Absolutely. Van Wert. Um, being a part of the worship time, so many ways to be involved in this ministry. Yeah, I mean, general cleaning of the facilities that we're using, or just some people, that's all they need help with, is they aren't capable of cleaning their house like they need to anymore. So they just need somebody to come in and help them out that way. Again, visit communityrelief.net to learn more about the upcoming outreach events in Van Wert and Troy, as well as the one day projects that are available anytime. Next, I'm excited to introduce you to author Amber Joy Daniel. In my opinion, the most incredible book one can read is the Bible. And within the Bible is the account of Ruth. You probably know it well. But Amber has written a book using historical cultural information that may open your eyes to the account of Ruth in an entirely new way. The name of the book is Destiny Survivor and the author is Amber Joy Daniel. I am thrilled to have Amber here in the studio. We've been talking a little bit before we got started. She has so many incredible things going on. I think we could talk for a couple hours, <laughs> but today we're going to talk about this book Mm -hmm. Your first book, my first book, Destiny Survivor. Of course, we don't want to tell the whole story, but can let's get into it and let's get the viewers hooked on this. Why they want to read this? Okay, so this is the story of Ruth, kind of like told on steroids. <laughs> so we go into all the little things that uh, the nuances are there in the Bible, but we pull those out. So the fact that she was single, she was Moabite, which means that she should have married a good Moabitish boy. But no, 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 no. She wanted something that looked and smelled and walked and talked <laughs> a little differently. So, you know, in the Bible story, she wanted to marry the Jewish boy. And of course, we understand as well that the word says that Moabites, they were not allowed to mix with Jews. Mm -hmm. And then you have Ruth. So how does that happen? We tease out there a little bit um, what it's like to be different what it's like to be accepted or not quite accepted. Mm -hmm. And then there are a few themes in there as well that people don't always realize. I think she and her sister-in-law were married to brothers living side by side, and it had been about 10 years with no baby. Mm -hmm. And you know, back then you were a woman and you existed to be a sons. Mm -hmm. If you bore daughters, mm, you were okay, but you existed to bear sons. And she didn't in the first year, not in the second, the third, mm -hmm. the fourth. And we kind of tease out waking up every morning and wondering, will today be the day my sister-in-law announces, we're having a baby mm -hmm. and you're not having a baby. And you know, as women, month after month, when that particular thing yeah. happens and you're like, oh. Especially at that time at when that, that time. was your worth. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And then well, we skip from the hard parts into the really romantic part mm -hmm. where she meets Boaz. <laughs> and um, there's a special relationship though, a special mentoring relationship between Naomi and Ruth. And that is teased out as well. Um, but the overarching story is one of a young woman who dares mm -hmm. not to live out her fate but to take her destiny. Mm -hmm. And that's a clarion call of the book. Um, each of us, God has a very special, unique destiny for us, but that doesn't come free. That mm -hmm. comes often at a cost. And we know that Jesus paid it all. Mm -hmm. He paid everything, mm -hmm. but there's a price that we need to pay to walk mm -hmm. in the fullness of what God has mm -hmm. for us. And that pretty much um, is, is the real push behind the book and the heart of the book to really inspire others to take that destiny journey. So this is incredible because what you have here is you have the account of Ruth, but like you said on steroids, and I agree, because when I started reading this, I had to remind myself that I was reading the account of Ruth because if you jump in the Bible, there's only certain elements that we read, though I had always thought to myself, well, how did, how did these guys both pass away and how did all of this happen? And I love the way from a historical, cultural standpoint, you make all of that come to life, not only very evidently, 
but also very interestingly. It, it, it draws you in, it causes you want to keep reading to figure out what's gonna happen next, really bringing the book of Ruth to light in a new way. Yes, and those, those two things were important. So I married it to a, a historian, mm -hmm. so get your facts right. We do take, we do take some poetic license, mm -hmm. but um, being married to my husband really gave me that um, impetus to want to do a lot of research into how things really were. Mm -hmm. So that's that piece. But then as an avid reader growing up reading, um, I wanted to read a Christian book that gripped me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mm -hmm. read something that got me from page one and had me turning every page. And I think that our Holy Spirit really helped to make uh -huh. that a reality in this one. Mm -hmm. So another thing I really like about the book is what you, what you talked about of, of the picture, what we can take away. This is more than just a, a historical fiction type book. I mean, we're coming from the book of Ruth, but like she said, she took some poetic license with it. But it's not just about that. The reader can walk away from this with a better sense of how I am supposed to be in my life as well. Yes. That was the idea. And, and so what we do in our normal lives at, at, for a job, that's what we do for a job. And so this was a way to bring that message maybe to a wider audience. Everybody may not be able to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, um, but the book helps us to get that message out to all and sundry, wherever you are, you can read this and access what we do. Mm -hmm. This is your very first book. Very first. I'm guessing, though, this is not your first foray at writing. I mean, this is a well, well done book. It is well published. It is. It does not appear as a starter book by any way, shape, or form. Well, thank you. <laughs> a lot of academic writing, a few degrees there, <laughs> finishing up the doctorate this year. So there's been a lot of academic writing, but this was a very different style that I had to mm -hmm. learn. And... Uh, God is faithful and my editors are great. <laughs> so how do we get this book? We have more to talk about in a moment, but let's get to the nitty gritty of how we get to this book. Go to your website. That's the first yeah. step. So you can go, the book has a website. It's www.destinysurvivor.com. Same name of the book, Destiny Survivor, just www.destinysurvivor.com. And it's all there. You can also go to our website, which is Destiny Strategists. Dot com. That's it. All that information you see yep. is right there on the screen. Of course, yep. you can also contact us here at TV44, and we will make sure that we get you connected so that you can find the way to purchase the book. You have this week, get your calendar out because it's coming up this week. You've got some events going on. July the 29th, you're going to be at the Salina Library, and you're going to be at the Wapakoneta Library. Yes, we're working on Lima, but as of today, not as yet. But yes, on the 29th, we'll be... Um, at Salina at 1 p.m. and then we would be at Wapakoneta at 5 p.m. And you'll be there with books, we'll books be there for with sale, books. you'll sign yes. the books. Yes. It's always yes. fun to yes. meet an author. I mean, that just makes it even that much better. So you get to come and meet her personally. And I've only known her for about a half an hour now and I can already tell you, this is someone you wanna hang out with. So there's oh. your chance, you want to go. And then let's talk about the five day Destiny Survivor Challenge that runs from July 29th through August 2nd, seven o'clock every night, July 29th through August 2nd, seven o'clock every night. What is the five day Destiny Survivor Challenge? Yeah, so based on the book, to get you to take your destiny, we wanna do more than just talk shop, right? We wanna give you practical um, strategies, tools that you can use to get from where you are to where God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. You want to be in the center of your destiny. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to, you want to be an arrow that hits the bullseye, that gets your mm -hmm. target, that you're living the life you were meant to live. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge gives you an opportunity to get to know us, interface with us, but more than that, we'd be sharing for free, for free, what we share with our clients. And the first step is to, a lot of people feel stuck. If you're stuck, or if you're a woman who wants more, if you're someone who knows there's got to be more than this. I have success, but I know there must be more. If you've been told you can, you can have a career, you know, but you can't have a family, mm -hmm. or you're a wife and a mother and you know there's leadership locked inside. My degrees are in leadership development, so that's what we do. You know there's leadership inside, but you don't quite know, but I'm, I, I, I just don't know how to navigate this mm -hmm. piece. 
that's what we do. And the, the five nights, we're going to give you tools to first identify where you are, identify where you want to go, and then tactics, strategies that will get you from here to there. And how do people register for that? So on our website, if you go to destinystrategists.com, www.destinystrategists.com, the link would be there. Even that, I'll put the link as well in the Destiny Survivor um, site. So either of those two sites, you'd have the opportunity to join the challenge there. All right, I encourage you to get your copy of this book. It's fun reading, it's fun reading, easy reading, but also informative, inspiring, and like Amber mentioned, it'll impact you personally as well. And then also make sure you head to her website, destinystrategists.com is the main website where you can find out more information about that Survivor Challenge and more about the things that you offer because you have a lot more than just the book. You are doing things that are really impacting people's lives. Like you said, getting them to where God called them to be and helping them know what they need to do to get there. Yes, we have marriages, promotions, raises. Those are the types of things that our clients experience. And, and in a quick time, mm -hmm. short time, we collapse time for our clients. So God yeah. can work right like that, can he? Yes, he can. He can. Amber Joy Daniel, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you so it much. It has been a pleasure to have thank you Thank you, here. Jen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And finally, she's no stranger to WTLW TV 44. In fact, when I first worked here back in the 90s as part of the 44 News team, this woman was my boss. Lisa Kraler has a history in journalism, both print and television. But almost 30 years ago, she and her husband started a business that perhaps you've heard of, IDW or I Do Windows LLC. But through all of that, the journalism background, the business, and a lot more, Lisa and her husband Keith have much to share about God's provision and direction. She recently wrote about it in the book, Illuminate. A well-known face here at TV44, Lisa Kraler is with me, a published author, and we are here to talk about Illuminate, different make, difference makers shining through their stories. And Lisa, you share some incredible stories in your chapter in this book. Well, you know, it was really hard because I only had 3,000 words. I need a lot more than 3,000 <laughs> words, right? We all do. And, but this was a great opportunity for me to get my feet wet in publishing. And so I'm grateful to Performance Publishing in Texas for giving me the, the shot at this. But yeah, I mean, when you, back, you look at your life, I look at my life, we all have a story to share. There's so much that happens in our lives. And um, that's what I wanted to do here is to share a snapshot of the things that my husband and I went through in starting our business. So she is one of 12 authors in this book right here. And we're gonna tell you how you can purchase your own in just a moment, but let's talk about your chapter because you packed a lot of information into 3000 words. Um, God has done some incredible things in your life, in Keith's life, your husband, um, taking you from maybe the depths, really the, the pig depths, yeah. to, to bright and shiny clarity, we could yeah. say, since you moved into the window business. Well, that's why it was pretty easy for me to come up with the name of my chapter, God Makes a Way When There Seems to Be No Way, because there's been so many times in my life, our lives, when there, did, when there was no other way. You know, if we did not have faith in Christ, we would have given up, we would have had no hope. And I guess that's really the message in my story is that to never quit, to step out in faith, take a risk and hold on to God's hand. And so, yeah, we, of course, we met on a cruise ship. I'm not going to tell all the details, but we met on a cruise ship and we lived on a pig farm in Minnesota and we were a million dollars in debt. And um, there's just so much that happened for God to bring us through that. Um, and then my husband started a window cleaning business in Minnesota and we came out here. Now we're in our 29th year with IDW mm. window and roof cleaning. Uh, that's I do windows, IDW. I'm sure you've seen the, uh, the, the, the vehicles. You may have used the service. Maybe you are using the service, which is a great, great idea. But it's easy to look at that and say, oh, they're doing so great. It must have been easy. But no, it was God guiding you through all of it. Oh, yes. And anybody that started a business know it's not easy. Um, especially today, there's just so much going on in, in the world, as we all know. But back then, you know, it's funny because people will say, you know, what was your business plan when you started the business and all that? The business plan was to put food on the table. Mm. There was no business plan. He started um, 
becoming a window cleaner because he saw another window cleaner when he was traveling doing sales and he's a physical you know he was used to be a farmer he likes physical work and that's how he started it but there were so many things that we learned during that time because of all of the challenges we went through that we were just trying to find our way and i think sometimes people think they have to have everything laid out mm -hmm. and figured out ahead of time before they actually step out and at least for us that wasn't the way we had to walk first and then god was illuminating our mm -hmm. path as like the book talks about and um so you know a lot of things happened over the years and now we're in our 29th year and um, i love talking to small business groups and people or women that want, are getting into business because there's just a lot of things you learn along the way you're not the experts but you have gone through it mm, that's what makes you become the experts really to yeah. go through the hard times to keep going through the hard times and then find the success yeah it was challenging on the on the farm i mean we like i said we were million dollars in debt when we got married which you know when you're in love, you kind of think, oh, we'll overcome that. It'll all work out, you know, <laughs> but it was quite the challenge. And, um, you know, there was just a lot of things we went through, but it strengthened our marriage and it strengthened our faith. Mm -hmm. And in this chapter, um, I just kind of reveal a few things that occurred in our lives to try to make the statement. I'm first of all, I'm sharing our story because I think it's important for people to share what they've been through so that we can inspire and encourage other people what, for what they're going through in their lives. Um, and of course, I also had some medical issues later in life here that I had to fight through too. And, but the, all, the theme of it all is that with God, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really wanna share is that because of Christ and who he has been in our life, mm -hmm. we've been able to have all of these things happen. That doesn't mean you don't have any problems. We know what yeah. that's like, right? <laughs> but with him, we can make it through. Now, Lisa alluded to the fact that she had some medical issues, and um, I want you to read the book. We could tell the entire story right now, but yeah. we want we people want to, to read that. the book. But let's that. just say that Lisa is here by the miraculous hand of God. Um, what she encountered, it is incredible that she is living and breathing today. God obviously had a plan for her life, just like he has a plan for your life as well, as she's continued to uh, build the business, grow her marriage, uh, take care of your grandchildren, all kinds yes. of great things. But we also can't forget about the fact that she has a history in journalism. Perhaps those of you who are familiar with IDW don't realize that you started out in newspaper, magazine, and of course you were right here on TV 44 for several years as well. So it's no secret, as soon as I started reading this, I'm like, oh, oh yes, <laughs> she can write. <laughs> well, I've been writing since I was 10. I always loved writing. I have reams of journals at home of, that I wrote when I was younger and even little stories and stuff that I'm now starting to share with my granddaughters and so I've and always had this passion and we don't yeah, want to forget him yeah and my grandson <laughs> oh, yeah that's right I'm sorry he's sorry. really little he's, he's little. just he's really yeah, little I'm yet. getting used to it yet he's, he's <laughs> just almost four months but you know so it's exciting to be able to get back into this I guess you know we've gone through all of these years and most of my writing in recent years has been marketing kind of things mm -hmm. I'm ready to get back to my roots, which is writing stories. I, I'm, I'm more of a storyteller than anything else. I don't have great words of wisdom, but I have lots of experience mm -hmm. in life that um, I think can help people. And that's really where my passion, my heart is to, is to help people. Why were you excited about being a part of this Illuminate project um, organized by Michelle Prince, one of 12 authors here who are all having a chance to share their illuminating wisdom in this book? I think it's because um, well, one, it was an opportunity for me to get my feet wet in writing and share something. But I like the whole premise. It's talking about letting your light shine. And we all have the opportunity to let our light shine um, with other people. Um, I feel like people tend to think they have to be a great writer or um, have these high expectations of themselves that they can't quite accomplish. I just think we all need to be sharing your story. Mm. Whether it's sitting down like this and talking with a friend and saying, hey, I went through this one time and sharing that over a cup of coffee or maybe doing some video clips that you're gonna show your grandkids someday. Mm. As I get older, I realize that we need to impart into other people what we have learned. We're not the experts, but we have gone through it. And that's what I really wanted to do through this book and be a part of all of these other authors in here that are sharing a glimpse of their lives um, from 
Now they've started nonprofit organizations. Some of them are business coaches. Some of them are business leaders or business owners, but they're all sharing a part of their lives. And the common theme is they've all gone through stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't just happen. Here. And they're still here they're still and they're going. thriving <laughs> and they're sharing their story. Yes, we have all gone through stuff, but with God, we can get through that stuff. Wouldn't it be nice if God just got rid of the stuff? Yeah, it wouldn't that be awesome? Doesn't seem to work that way. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. I think we all would. But you know what? Then that's how we learn and that's how we grow. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest opportunity that you have and I have is that the things that we do go through, when we can let a peek into our lives from other people, they can see into our lives and they can say, well, if they made it, and if they've put their faith in Christ and they're taking risks and they're fighting through, I can do the same. And that's really what we want to do. Absolutely. All right. So how can people purchase this book? Well, our uh, business, IDW Window and Roof Cleaning, has a website, IDWindowsLLC.com. Um, if you, there'll probably be a link on the screen. Mm -hmm. You can click yep. that. It's IDWindowsLLC.com slash illuminate. And there's a landing page that comes up and you can... Uh, read a little bit more about the book and you can order it there. It's also on Amazon and a whole lot of other things online. But, um, you know, either way, they can get the book. All right. The book is called Illuminate. This is volume two. So make sure you look for volume two. The subtitle is Difference Makers Shining Through Their Stories. The author listed is Michelle Prince, but Lisa Kraler, you don't want to miss chapter eight, chapter eight. That's where you're going to hear Lisa's story. So we encourage you to go to IDoWindowsLLC.com forward slash illuminate. Purchase your copy of this book. And that is all for this edition of In the Community. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for joining us. As I leave, I just want to remind you that the Southwest Tower Project is still underway. 100% of the money you donate will be doubled and will be used to build the new tower in Salina, a repeater TV station intended to spread WTLW and WOSN to an even larger audience. Learn more at WTLW.com forward slash donate. I close with a scripture passage that we've been focusing on in July with our faith-focused topic of love. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Today I encourage you to show God's love to other people. <laughs>